Today we're talking about the best NPCs, non-playable characters, and personally I think the best NPCs are actually in role-playing games, and that alone just opens this floodgate of opportunity for the best ones. Uh, I'm gonna go in Dragon Age Origins, the first Dragon Age game from Bioware. There was this little dwarf guy that was with the merchant. It was kind of his adopted son, but it's just someone that he found, like, like in the caves. Now, his name was Sandal, and the thing is, you would go to him to enchant your weapons. Now, the only thing he'd say to you is, Enchantment? Enchantment? Enchantment! Like, that's all he would say. <laughs> and then, when you're in the very end of the game, and like, the, the castle's being overrun by Darkspawn, you come across this one room, and there's just dead Darkspawn everywhere. You walk in, and you're like, what the fuck happened here? Who killed all these guys? And there's Sandal, just standing there covered in blood. And so you can go up to him, you talk to him, and one of your dialogue options is what happened here. And he says one thing again, enchantment! So you're like, damn, all right, enchantments work. I should maybe start to enchant my weapons because they really help. Uh, but I remember losing at that moment. It was so funny. It was a fun character that just, you didn't really think anything of it, and then they just added him right there, and you're like, that's, that's brilliant. Well done, Bioware. That's why we love you. Favorite NPCs? Well, you gotta go with the obvious one from probably one of the best games of all time. Wheatley from Portal 2. Non-player character, hilarious, bumbling robot. Uh, <laughs> the very first, as soon as you meet him, he performs a manual override on a wall and just punches through the wall. Manual override. I just love the way he praises everything. He's like, uh, hang on while I hack this door. And then he just breaks the glass and he's, he makes you turn around and stuff. Just everything he does is hilarious. And he's like, uh, he gets chased by birds and stuff. He's just a hilarious companion uh, throughout Portal 2. Uh, and probably the game wouldn't have been nearly as good without him. Let's face it, he's probably, he, you know what, beyond NPCs, he's probably just one of the best video game characters of all time, period. Yeah, said it. Talking about favorite NPCs today, and I think the one that sticks out in my head above all the others is Shodan. Uh, System Shock 1, but most notably in System Shock 2 as the main antagonist as you're going throughout the story. And uh, she just has the creepiest voice you've ever heard in your whole life. Imagine the powers I can give to you. Well, I, I don't know what it is. It has like that kind of high, low thing going on. And like, it's even weirdly like sexy, especially for an AI, but then it's also like hollow. Look at you, hacker. Like, it's like super creepy, but it like, it really makes you like on edge every time she talks to you like while you're trying to go throughout the uh, I, it's the god what's the name of the ship but every time you're going throughout the ship I, I know it's like something more uh, Ishi no that Ishimura is dead space now I'm getting games confused but uh, but Shodan was amazingly terrifying and probably the coolest NPC she's definitely the only only NPC uh, that I've ever encountered in a video game that's given me nightmares so that counts for something I think now there is one particular NPC that I wish was so P, I mean playable. I, the merchant from Resident Welcome. Evil 4, he's like, what are you buying? What are you selling? Oh, I'll buy it at a high price. A uh, random fun fact, voiced by the guy that does Chris Redfield. Hmm? Look at that, I bet you didn't know. I think, right? That's accurate information. Editor, double check that fact. Yeah, it's correct? All right, good. Uh, but he's just got like a number of random weapons. You can even find his little hideout spot. And he has enough ammo to like supply a small army. So I want him to have his own game where he's just taking out like all these like mutated zombies or whatever they're called in Resident Evil 4. Lagas, that's what it was. Just him like dual like AK 47s, da 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 da, pull it out a rocket launch and take out El Gigante. Uh, he's a fun character. Yeah. Even though he was kind of like. Oh, no, I'm just buying weapons. Uh, but he was a really cool character. He pops up in, like, the best times. He had little blue flames with him. So, loving the merchants. Good job. And how about, from the Borderlands series, Claptrap. Uh, Claptrap, uh, hilarious. He had some of the best lines ever. Uh, like when he's talking about how, uh, when you first meet him in Borderlands 2, and he's talking about how uh, my friends call him Claptrap. Or I would if I had any friends and they weren't dead or whatever. <laughs> just like everything about him is horribly depressing and he gets excited when you come talk to him and he doesn't have like an exclamation over his head. He's like, oh my God, you're talking to me and there's no exclamation over my head. And uh, just horrible things happen to him. He gets electrified in that game and 
gets his eye ripped out and stuff like that. It's, and it's uh, every bad thing that happens to him is great. Uh, so, yeah, I guess I picked two bumbling robots as uh, as my favorite NPCs. But uh, that's kind of kind of how I feel about NPCs. I'd rather they be robots. Ooh, how about a team up game? Claptrap and Wheatley. I would play it. I would play it. You could play co-op, and they wouldn't be NPCs at all. They would be PCs. And then my next favorite NPC, this one's kind of a little messed up, is, uh, is Mancrick from World of Warcraft. And he played on the Horde side, uh, especially if you were the orcs, uh, orcs or trolls, then you, uh, then you encountered Mancrick when you went into the Barrens, and, uh, and he always had this mission for you every single time you encountered him, where he's like, please find my wife, she's been missing for two days or whatever. And then you go and you find, her, you find the wife, and she's dead. You know, there's no saving her. She's just already dead. And then the rest of the quest is just go back and tell Mancrick that his wife is dead. And then you go back and you tell him, and he's like, well, now I have the peace of knowing what happened, and it sucks, and blah, blah, blah. But then, every time you make a new character, you go back and he doesn't know where his wife is. What's that about? You've just tell he's in denial. He's living in denial. He's living in a dream world. Every single time he just wants to know his wife is, and she's always in the same spot, dead, lying by the huts down south and toward the southern barrens. And somehow she doesn't decompose ever, which is interesting. Maybe she's not dead, she's just plan dead, because Mancrick is such a doofus and he can't remember anything. That's what I would, that's what I think about Mancrick. It's kind of funny. Everyone always like, <laughs> people always in the chat would be like, where's Mancrick's wife? And then everyone would just give them misinformation because it's like the easiest quest to complete ever. And it's like, just find her. We all found her. Just find Mancrick's wife. I found her like 20 times. And really, I think that's why Mancrick's single, at the very least. Keep track of your woman.